Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can drop a tool by pressing a letter on the keyboard. So let's go ahead and equip the tool here. And then I set it up so that whenever the player presses the letter E on the keyboard, it drops the tool. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be writing two scripts. One of those scripts is going to be a local script inside the starter player scripts. The other one is going to be a regular script inside of the server script service. Since we're going to be using remote events, let's go ahead and start with that. So under replicated storage, go ahead and add a remote event. And then you're going to rename that to drop event. After that, we're going to start with the local script that we're going to put inside of starter player scripts. Okay, inside of this script, since we're going to be getting input from the user, we're going to start with a variable for the user input service. So we'll say local user input. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put user input service. Next, we're going to make a variable for the replicated storage and also the remote event. So we'll start by saying local replicated storage. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. After that, we're going to say local drop event. And this is going to be equal to replicated storage. And then we're going to say colon wait for child. And inside here is going to be the name of the remote event, which we call drop event. After that, we're going to write a function that will run whenever a user presses a key on the keyboard. We'll say local function. The name of this function is going to be drop. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put input. And then we're going to do comma and game processed. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying if not game processed. Then we're going to check to see what type of user input we're getting. So we're going to say if input dot user input type. And we're going to check to see if that's equal to input from the keyboard. So we'll say enum dot user input type. And then here we're going to say dot keyboard. If it's from the keyboard, we want to know what letter was pressed. So we're going to store that inside of a variable. So we'll say local key code. And that's going to be equal to input dot key code. After that, we're going to say if key code. So this will be the letter that was pressed. If that's equal to enum dot key code. And then here is going to be the letter that you want to press to drop the tool. I'm going to choose E, but you can choose whichever letter you want to. Okay, if it was the letter E, then what we're going to do is we're going to trigger the remote event. So I'll say drop event and then colon fire server. Okay, finally down here at the bottom, we're just going to connect this to the event. So we'll say user input dot input began. Then we'll say colon connect. And then we're going to connect this with our function, which is called drop. Okay, so that handles everything on the local side. Let's go over to the server script service and write the other script. On this script, we're going to start with the same two lines for the replicated storage and also for the remote event. So let's just go ahead and copy those from this script right here. After that, we're going to be writing another function that will run whenever the remote event gets triggered. So we'll start by saying drop event, and then we're going to say dot on server event. And then we're going to say colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the word function. And then we're going to put parentheses. And then in between the last two parentheses, we're going to press enter a few times. Inside the parentheses next to the word function, we're going to pass the player. So this will be the player that triggered the remote event. What we want to do first is find their player model in game.workspace. So we'll say local player model. And this is going to be equal to game.workspace. And then we're going to say colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put player dot name. 
After that, we're going to say if player model. So if we're able to find the player's model, then what we're going to do is try to locate the tool that they're holding. So we'll say local tool, and that's going to be equal to player model. And then we're going to say colon find first child. And since we want this to work for any type of tool, we're going to say which is A. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put tool. Next, we'll say if tool, which will mean that we found the tool. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say tool dot parent, and that's going to be equal to game dot workspace. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So let's just go and double check and make sure it's still working. Okay, and then whenever they press the letter E, it looks like it's not working. So let's go and check out the output. So it looks like a spelling error here, so I misspelled the word server. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. It should be S-E-R and then V-E-R. So let's go ahead and rerun the code and we'll check it out. Okay, so now my player is able to equip the tool. Whenever they press the letter E, it unequips. If you wanna choose a different letter for the unequip, you can do that in the local script. So on the local script here, if you want to choose something like maybe the letter Q, then you would just change it right here, and now it'll unequip with the letter Q. Okay, so now it works exactly the same, but instead of pressing the letter E, I can press the letter Q to unequip. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.